Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Value Videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull in options data for any stock you want. In this case, I use Microsoft. And for any uh, expiration date you want for the options contract. So I got calls on one side and puts on the other. Uh, and the strike price is right down the middle. Um, and so you can change it for any date you want and for any ticker you want. And you can just go over here. And let's say I wanted to get Home Depot and I wanted for a different date. Let's do, um, you can pick any date you want. So I'll do nine. Uh, what would be the next one? 15, 16, 9, 16, um, 2016. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do insert a button. There we go. Run the, run the macro, run it, and it'll pull in the data for, we'll go over here and just make that a date. There we go, for 916 for Home Depot. And here's the expirations um, for each of those. we got calls on the left puts on the right and you can make it if you didn't like it in straddle format you can make just a list of all the calls and then below that a list of all the puts um, I just like to see it in uh, straddle format right there so I'm gonna show you how to make this it's super easy it doesn't take too long um, all right let's do it all right so let's go ahead and make this Excel sheet so the first thing we're gonna need to do is pull in the data from Yahoo Finance that we're gonna use and so we're gonna be looking for options data so I'm gonna go ahead and hit alt tab and it's gonna take us over to Yahoo Finance and so I just went, I searched Yahoo Finance, and then in the top I searched for any ticker that I wanted. I use Microsoft for my example because it's really easy to, to understand. And so I just typed MSFT, and then I clicked on the Options tab that's right here. And then so it took me to the Options page, and then uh, it shows I have the calls and puts um, in a list right here, but I kind of like it to be in a straddle. So I'm going to click the Straddle tab, and that's going to add on a little toggle at the end of our URL. And that just says straddle equals true. And that's going to be helpful later because we might, we might not want it to be straddle. We might want to be list later on. So we're going to add into our code to change. If this says false, then it'll give us the list form. If I click on that, you can see false. So we can make that true and false. And we also want to be able to select a date because um, it's nice to see the most current calls and puts. But sometimes we want to do like a calendar spread or something. Um, and that's going to require us to get multiple dates. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on a different date. It doesn't matter which date you click on. Just click on one of them. Uh, because that'll add on the little date uh, number right here. And at first glance, it, this number doesn't look like it means anything. We know that it corresponds to September 2nd because that's the number that came up when I clicked on September 2nd. But uh, it's just looking at it, it's, it doesn't make sense why this number would be September 2nd and you know it wouldn't just be like a 9216 or something because that would just be September 2nd, right, 2016. Um, but I'll show you in a second how we can figure out what this date represents and how to match it to different dates on this whole list. So we can pick any of these dates we want and we'll be able to know ahead of time what number this is so that we can write our code to be able to pull those dates. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole URL, do control C, and I'm going to go back to Excel and then I'm going to go over to my developer tab, open Visual Basic, control R opens the project window, go to this workbook, and I'm going to close that project window and then I'm going to do sub options get and then I'm gonna give it a couple lines so we have some room to work and now I'm gonna make we can pick any variable we want variable can go here um, but I'm gonna call it query URL Q URL because that's just it makes the most sense to me equals and then I'm gonna open print or open uh, quotes and then do control V to put to paste in that URL that we had and then close the quotes and so right now we have a variable and the whole URL from Yahoo and so that by itself this is where we're gonna get um, all of our data from and we just need to be able to fix the ticker to be whatever ticker we want and straddle to be either true or false depending on which one we want and then we want to just fix the date so it's actually really straightforward how we're going to um, do this it's it doesn't take too long at all um, the next line that we're going to need to put in there is the line that takes our query URL this variable and actually imports the data into Excel so we'll do that with active sheet dot query tables dot uh, add connection equals and then in quotes URL and then a semicolon close quotes and then we want and uh, our variable QURL comma destination colon equals range I'm gonna put it in a1 just for right now close the extra parentheses that comes from the connection one so this parentheses and this parentheses go together and then these two parentheses go around a1 so if I click outside of that, you can see it it, blew, it made the with word blue uh, and it did the capitalizing. So I know that I did everything kind of right. And then because I have a with, I need an end with. And then between the widths, just to make everything uh, kind of update on Excel, and we have a connection to the URL. So what we need to do is do a, a background Q-U-E-R-Y equals true. And then dot refresh. 
background q u e r y uh, and this one needs a colon equals false and that's just gonna uh, if, if you don't have the colon right there it's not gonna work so you have to make sure but you don't need to have a colon on the first one so just make sure you notice those great so that by itself and then let's go ahead and just to be absolutely certain we'll do sheets one dot select and so that'll make sure we always import this data onto sheet one um, I ran this before where I forgot that part and then I was clicking on a different sheet, ran the macro, and it just overwrote everything that I already had on a different sheet. So just make sure you have, um, and actually for destination range, we can also do destination range sheet one dot range a one. And that's going to be just an extra, an extra layer of protection to make sure that we're getting everything in the right spot. And we'll go ahead and run it. Oh, what did I do? She oh, sheets, plural. There we go. It's a spelling error. And go ahead and run it. Great, so now it pulls in, we have a straddle, we, because we did, if I go back here, we did uh, straddle equals true, and so it pulled in calls on this side, puts on this side, but it didn't label them, so we just need to remember. Calls are on the left, puts are on the right. Um, but it did give us two kind of buffer rows. You can leave those in there if you want. If you don't want to, the code to delete those rows is rows one through two dot delete shift colon equals XL up. And what that does is it deletes these two rows and then shifts everything below it up up into to fill its spot. And so if I go ahead and go over here, and then we also want to do, oops, okay, come on, there we go. So we also want to do, uh, if we're going to import data later, we want to make sure we don't um, squish it all together at once. So we'll do sheets one dot cells dot clear, and that'll just get rid of everything uh, before it runs um, the rest of the code. So if I run it now, you can see it just deleted everything, pulled in more data, deleted those top two rows, shift everything up. So now we have all the data we need right here. So now from here, all we need to do is modify our URL based on whatever things that we want. So we need a certain date, we need straddle equals either true or false, and we need the ticker symbol. Uh, the ticker symbol appears twice, so we just need, we only need to assign it once, and then we can go ahead and fill it in. So what we'll do is we'll go over to sheet two, and we'll make everything work right here. So I'll say, ticker and MSFT then we need date and that's the date that we're gonna look for so if I'm looking for August 26th of 2016 um, and I'll actually go ahead and make that a long date so you can see because it needs to be a Friday and we need to make sure that it's a Friday uh, in fact let's start with that so let's do um, in order to double check that this date is always a Friday because options only work or only or they're weekly right and so we needed all, all, the date that we pick always needs to be a Friday if we pick a Tuesday to get options contracts, it won't work because options don't expire on Tuesdays. They expire on Fridays. And so we need a, a part of our code to make sure that um, that this date that we're looking for is always a Friday. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So we're going to do equals weekday. Oops. Let's go ahead and equals weekday. There we go. Um, of this cell. And if I just did that by itself, it comes back as a six. And that's because Friday is the sixth. It counts one, two, three, four, five up to Friday is six and then Saturday is seven and then Sunday is one again so um, Fridays are always six and if I just do equals six at the end that that tells Excel to check whether the day of the week for a six is equal to six and if I enter it says true now if I change this to a different date let's change it to 24 now that's a Wednesday so this comes back as false and so now that's just the that's the most simple like error checking that we can do to make sure that it's a Friday. But now we can go ahead and add into our code in the beginning. We only want it to run if sheets two dot range uh, and this is B six. Then so we only want if this cell equals true, then it's a Friday, right? So we only want to run it if this cell is true. So then it can do everything. But let's do, if this is false, then stop early, right? And so what we can do is, and if, and what we'll do is, um, right now it says, if it's true, then do something. We'll say, if it's not true, then do something by saying not. So if not that line, then what do we want to do? We'll just put stop right now. If you wanted to do, you could do something fancy like message, bo message box um, and do like um, not Friday. There you go. We can do something like that. Um, and so if I make this, but that won't stop the macro. It'll just give you an error box. So we can run that. So it says, that's not a Friday, but I'll run it anyway. And then it keeps going. So that's fine. We can just do stop right there. So 
clear, not Friday, and then it'll stop. So that by itself is pretty good. So we'll just leave it at that. So now if this number or if this date is, a, is not Friday, then it'll stop early. So now we have that. We go back to there. Cool. So now we just need to figure out, um, if we go back to here. We have this date number, but we don't know what it is. We know that that corresponds to August 26th. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it right now. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do 826. Oops, 8, 26, 16, and then I'm going to paste it right there so we have it. And then I'm going to go back over to Yahoo, and I'm going to check out, let's do September 2nd. Oh, that was uh, 440 is September 2nd, so if I go back to Excel, 440 is September 2nd. Okay, so this is 9 to 16, there we go, September 2nd, and then August 26th ends in 600 so control C go back control V okay cool so now this date corresponds to this and this number corresponds to this and if I go and subtract them I can go equals minus and then so this number 604800 uh, 604800 is the difference between every week and so if I wanted the next week if I wanted 9916 all I have to do is equals the previous one plus that number and that's the one. So it's 14, uh, 733, 79, 200. So if I go back over here and I do September 9, 79, 200 at the end, 79, 200 at the end. So you can see each week is just adding another one on. And so now I just need to figure out what the code is. So I'm going to put over here code. And so the way to do that is equals, and I'm going to have to subtract the dates. So I'm going to take the date that I'm looking for minus, and I'll start with August 26 because that's the earliest date that I have. And if I hit enter, Oh, make that, okay, what am I looking for here? Uh, oh, let's subtract that one, there we go, the actual date. So I go equals the date that I'm looking for minus August 26th, I hit enter, and then if I make that general so it's actually easy to read, those are the same date, right? So it's going to give me zero. But if I start looking for, let's look for 9916, hit enter, so that's 14 days difference, so which is two weeks, right? And so rather than give me the number 14, I want to know how many weeks that are between it. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. I'm going to do divide by 7, and that gives me two weeks. Great. So I know that between Friday, September 9th, and uh, Friday, August 26th was two weeks. And so by doing that, now I know every week is one amount of these. And so all I have to do is take that number, and we'll put another parentheses, and do times that. And hit close parentheses, hit enter. And so that's how much more it needs to be from the starting point. So now all I have to do is add my starting point in. And now this should generate a code that represents the date for any date that I put in here. So if I look at this, this ends in 79200. And over here, it ends in 79200. If I change this to 9216, that ends in 4400. Over here, it ends in 4400. And let's do another one. So uh, that should be September 16th would be the next week, right? So we do 9... 16, 16, and that ends in 84,000. And we go back over to Yahoo, double check, September 16th ends in 84,000. So we know that it's right. Perfect. So this code will generate for any date that I want if I look on here. And it'll always work for Fridays. And so if I put a date that's not a Friday, it'll come back false, um, but we'll still get a code. And so everything should work there. So now I just go back over to um, my Visual Basic Editor. And so this just needs to be. Um, a different so it needs to be whatever date we're looking for and so I can put in here um, quote and and quote and then between the ands I'll do uh, let's do sheets because we want it to be on sheets two dot range and then inside that range is a8 so I'll do a8 close parentheses there we go and then uh, I'm gonna take and straddle equals true and I'm gonna just uh, let's do control X to get rid of that for a second and then we'll do, so we have all of that, and then we'll do if, I'll put a comment real quick, if straddle, then add on, and then we'll do qurl equals qurl and control v, and then we'll put that in, in quotes, and so what this will do, there we go, so what this will do is it'll say, give me the URL, and then if I want straddle, then add straddle equals true on the end. But how do I know if I want straddle or not? We'll just go down here. The easiest way to do it is straddle, yes. And now if I don't want it to be a straddle, I'll just change that to no. 
it's pretty easy so I'll keep yes for right now go back over here and then do if sheets two dot range oops range and that's uh, a11 so I'll do a11 uh, equals yes then add straddle equals true and if and then that way if it's not yes then it'll just skip this entirely and it'll leave the straddle equals true off so there we go um, so qurl equals finance so we have everything on there and we should be good to go now we just need a ticker so our ticker is going to be we'll go up here and we'll say ticker equals sheets two dot range and then we have it in a3 a3 and then we'll replace right here with uh, quote and and quote and then put ticker in its place and we'll go over here where the other one is and replace it with quote and and quote and do ticker again so there we go so now we should have everything we need we have our ticker in there twice we have our uh, the date range that we're looking at and we have straddle equals true if we want it so we should be good to go so we hit stop and hit play alright so it pulled in everything we need for right here and so if we want to just make it super clear we can go at the very end we can do um, sheets one dot range and then let's just do like m1 and m2 um, oops so we'll do over here range m1 m1 equals uh, ticker and then we'll do sheets one dot range m2 equals sheets two dot range oops uh, and then we'll look at what sheet is so our code there is a6 go back range a6 so then if I run the whole thing now there we go and then we'll just make that a date for September 16th so these are all our dates for September 16th and we'll go back and double check so let's go ahead and run it for uh, September 9th also so 9 9 uh, 16 and then go back over here run the macro go back over here oh we're gonna have to keep changing that I guess so let's go ahead oh, well that's okay you can write the code in to make that uh, date if you want but that's fine so we have 99 so this should be all of our options for 99 we go ahead and make it for any date we want as long as it's a Friday where options expire so that's gonna be this is gonna be a, a part one of the of a two-part I suppose series um, so on the next one I'll show you how to uh, kind of interpret this data and what to do and maybe some options strategies that you can use uh, based off of this we can do like some spreads or some straddles or um, I guess those are kind of the same thing, but you know, any kind of option strategies from here, you can do a covered call or protective put or something like that. So we can pull in the uh, stock price and kind of compare it to the different strike prices and see if there's any uh, profit opportunities. So that's how to do that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment in the uh, comments below and I'll see if, uh, if I can help you or maybe some of the awesome people who watch my videos can help out too. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. And you'd probably like these ones too. Match the, the function buy and index sell and the function match working together. The simple moving probably average crossover. The, uh, we're going to try to make this automated. The most so powerful. Any ticker uh, you want. Any date that range. Work together, and also any uh, time interval. You can put